Hey everybody, it's Righteous Freed, back with an another build guide video, this time featuring Altamuller and his upcoming SP class. We're going to get right into it. He is going to be amazing. We're going to pop up to Wikigrisser real quick. They have all the information that we're going to need about its class. And just look at him. An absolute beast. Look at how awesome that this new art is. Damn, he's gonna he is gonna be a king in single target. So we're gonna start first with his new talent. His SP talent is Peerless Dragon. First part of it is gonna be one of the best, ignore cost limit of skills. This is going to allow him to run seven costs in total just like juggler does with his bone so and the, and the reason why is there are two new skills that both have two costs now at the start of a turn and before entering battle you gain peerless attack plus five six seven eight percent depending on star level eight percent at six stars <clears throat> now you look at this and you compare it to his original talent it, it, at the max rank, it is noticeably weaker and stronger at the lower ones. They do this because you gain it easier at the start of a turn. So every time a turn starts, first turn of the battle, you start with one stack of Peerless. You attack, you'll have two. And since it takes you a turn to set up, at a very minimum, you're going to have three stacks before fighting. This is a lot better than this because you only get it when you're entering battle in single target no single target battle you don't get it with his original talent now you also gain physical damage taken minus two three four five percent at max rank exactly the same here so you can get so you can get that that way and it's gonna help him out a lot especially with all the stack damage resistance he has because he's just going to continuously fight 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 now it only lasts three turns unlike his original talent but that's because they are trying to force you to use his exclusive which we will go over in just a minute and it can be stacked up to a total of four times just like the original now when an enemy unit dies you also gain a stack of peerless and you increase the max stacks by one up to two so you can have a total of six stacks six times eight is 48 percent six times five is up to 30 percent damage reduction it can be a little hard to do that unless they are running summons so this is a great counter to get Gizarov, Akka for example or Liana when she brings Sky Archer it gives you a lot more incentive to kill to kill the Sky Archer as well and get rid of that construct as fast as possible And it's going to make them think twice about playing that if they let you get Ultimuler. Because just getting those stacks super early, giving him four stacks before a battle, that's insane. I could, I could never imagine just giving somebody 32% additional attack and 20% physical damage reduction while they're attacking and just giving it to him for free. So, it's really great for that. So, turning what your enemy thinks is going to be a buff for them into a buff for you as well is going to make them think twice about how they play and who they want to pick against you. It's great against Rush because if he can survive that hit and then just bring everybody in and start killing them, he's great for a counter Rush strategy. Now we're going to go down to his stats right here. His bonds has been out since the beginning. If you have them, you probably already have them unlocked. You need Anna in our character and Emric and SR. Super easy to get. Now it's an, his new class is also Flyer. And it's basically just an improvement over Dragon Master. You get 69 more HP and 8 more flat attack. And the rest of them are the same. So, if you haven't invested in the Dragon Master yet, don't. Just wait till Heavenly Dragon comes out. 
Soldier bonus, 40% HP, 40% attack. That's perfect. Gives him a ton of killing potential. We'll get to his crown later in, in the equipment section. We're going to go over his three costs, which is core and you must have on him if you're playing him. Supreme Battle. Range of 1, cooldown of 6. Attack a single enemy, dealing 1.5 damage. After battle, if there are two or more enemies within one ring of him, then this unit may attack again, but cannot move or use move again effects. This effect cannot be activated more than twice in one turn. When successfully defeating a target, cooldown minus 6 for the skill, but it, can o but it has a one turn cooldown in order to trigger the cooldown minus 6 again. So, really, really strong. He has potential to kill three squishy characters if they are out of position. Or kill two of them and leave one super damaged. Base. So now, this does require that you are surrounded. And it, when this was released, it, it was extremely hard in PvP to do that. Because you could very easily position and not have to worry about that. So, Ultimator's been out of the meta for a long time, has not not been used regularly at all, but with his new skills, we're going to jump to the bottom. Because you're not going to be using any of these other skills in his SP class except for Tactical Mastery. So, this is his faction buff. After you use it, all Strategic Masters gain increased stats, as well as effect. All passable terrain are treated as planes during movement. If terrain increases defense, damage dealt plus 15% in battle. This is only for single target, not AoEs, so they you lose that on there. Can't be stacked with other fusion powers. Faction buffs. So, this is very good for him, and he can self-faction buff himself. That way, he can get his net new abilities special talent. So, we're just going to drop down there. First one, Heavenly Dragon Wing. It's a passive. Ignore unit obstruction when moving, just like Ares. Before entering melee battle, for every stack of Peerless, his new talent, restore 10% HP up to 30%. This is a core piece of his equipment, because you want to run Supreme Battle, Heavenly Dragon Wing, and then Mad Dragon's Flurry. So you can, this allows you to just keep going, fighting. With all the damage resistance you have, you're going to be taking barely any damage, and then at the start of the next battle, you're just going to be at full health to keep it going. This is very good. Like, this will allow him to just kill three people in one turn if they are squishy enough. Active, after actively dealing damage and ending action, you gain two chances to negate the mobility reduction. So that way, on his next turn, he can ignore he, he can ignore two spaces. Like even though he's going to be flying, this would basically let him ignore a forest tile or a mountain. So he gets two extra movement. You're not going to be using that much because most likely after he goes in, he's either going to be single-handedly winning a battle or he's going to put you in a position where they can't recover. They, they will probably kill him after you're done attacking, but... Hey, if he goes in, he kills two people at least, and then they kill him, you're still up one. And you've probably taken out either... Uh, a DPS and a healer, two DPS, or two, you know, two squishies, like an off healer, like a D-Lit, for example. That's the most important thing. Put them at the position they can't recover. Now, Mad Dragon's Flurry is the whole reason why he is going to be amazing and he is going to shake up the meta. Physical damage deal 0.1 AoE damage to enemies within two rings of self. After battle, you gain... Wind Ride, where if you are have 50% or more HP, you take 15% less damage from a melee attack. So this gives them even more damage reduction. So we have 15% from Wind Ride, and then going back to his talent real quick, if we have three stacks, we have 12% physical damage taken reduced. So that's 27% right there. If you have last rights, that's a total of 67% damage reduction from just having three stacks. No, I'm sorry, it would be 5, that would be 15, so that would be 30, that would be 70%. I was, was, looking, was thinking the wrong way. So you have 70% damage reduction to Altamiller himself. Soldiers are going to take a lot less damage. They don't get the last right effect that only applies to the hero, but... 
70% damage reduction total to Ultimuler means when he's attacking, there is very little chance he is going to die unless it's like a Thorns Leaden. And even then, he still might live. Now, going back here to finish it up. After dealing damage, you transfer all hit enemies next to himself within one block, or just like how Ares does with this Fierce Hurricane after you Wind Whisper and Noble Charge. Now, the difference here is Ares only has the one ring with Wind Whisper because he's always played as a flyer. You can play Ares as an infantry with Balanced Blade, but you have nowhere near the, near the damage, so let's not go there. Now, after you pull everybody into you, you suck them in like a black hole. If this unit has a special effect from a fusion buff or faction buff, however you want to say it, and there are at least three enemies adjacent to him, he may attack again. Can't move or move again. This act again is on a three-turn cooldown. When you trigger it, your buffs do not decrease in duration. So this, this is the core of his kit. This is what makes him good. Because you can rip people out of formation. If they don't position the best way, you're just taking everybody, and then you can just kill people for free. Now, when you're running Mad Dragon's Flurry, they're probably going to position that way if you hit... If you're going to hit three of them, the tank is going to be included so he can guard them. That's going to happen. You just got to live with it. If you hit all five of them, there is a chance that you can position it so the tank is in one of the corners to him, like diagonal to him. So he only protects two people and not all, you know, not all five. So there is a chance of that happening, but it, can, it is pretty rare. You most likely are going to use this either countering rush comps, like they're going to spread out, and you're just going to find the perfect chance because you got a mobility buff, and you rip three of them in, and then you kill them. Or you're going to rip, like, two people out of formation to just bring them to him. That way your other units can follow up. If you, you, if you use this with a tank push strategy, you just get to the middle, and then they start coming to you. You can keep him in guard range, bring everybody to him, and then they have to go from there. They have to figure out how to stop you. Because if the tank can't protect everybody, they have to sacrifice somebody. So they're going to start throwing out all their damage. If you can make sure that Juggler is not there, then you're going to see, like Landius, Hilda, they won't have the movement to get to everybody or to obstruct you. So this can be great just for ripping people out of formation, having to make sure that they have to stay back. Because what can you do when somebody, if somebody can fly anywhere, just rip two people out of formation, then you have to choose who you sacrifice. At a bare minimum, you're going to get a one-for-one -one trade with this. You rip at least two people out. They might kill Altamuller, but then you just kill everybody else. And you just play it from there. You take out the most important people. That way they're on the back foot. Now, because this requires a fusion buff or a faction buff, it has to be somebody with a special one. He can give himself that, but here's the thing. You're going to be running Supreme Battle as 3C, Mad Dragon's Flurry. If you don't have anybody else to give you a faction buff, you can't run Heavenly Dragon Wing, which stops you from keeping your health up. So, depending on how the meta plays out and how other people play out, you're going to see if you don't want to run all the other people because of your box, you just want to throw them in there to be a big giant beat stick and a huge threat at all points of the game, you're going to cut out Heavenly Dragon Wing and use his own faction buff. Position him on a mountain, on a forest. Hey, you've just got 50% extra damage. You can kill somebody. It's very powerful, but primarily... You're going to want somebody who can buff Empire, Strategic, or Dark Reincarnation. Now, Ultimuler's SP form is estimated to be released right here, July 15th of this year. Before that, if we look at Bernhardt, his, his, Bernhardt's 3C, Iron-Blooded Ambition, is a super faction buff. It's estimated to, estimated to be released June 3rd. So... 
with him upcoming there, Empire and Strategic Master are going to be getting a lot more powerful. We're going to take a quick look at Bernhardt's faction buff to show you why. So his passive after attacking with a normal attack deal, 0.1 AoE damage to everybody within one ring. That's not the important part. The fusion power. All Empire Honor units receive the same standard faction stat increase. When entering battle, damage dealt is plus 18%. Just 18% period. Single target units are gonna love this. His original faction buff required that you have a faction that you have a class advantage in order to gain that damage buff. No longer needed with this. And it buffs Bernhard himself. He gets plus one movement, plus damage dealt plus 15%. Increases sword dance span by one, shield bass range by one. If he's going tank and has iron fist, his physical damage taken is minus 25%. And he gains hegemony, which when entering battle dispels an enemy buff and reduces their defense by 20% for one turn. So Bernhard is getting major power here. He's probably going to be played either as a really tanky physical tank, or he's going to be played as an AoE sword dance user to stop the healing and with rupture for fixed damage. It'll probably be used with Valence Blade in that case, but I'll, I believe a lot of people will use him as a tank and with Lava Golems. That way they can just push forward, make sure that they can keep everybody safe and just deal a bunch of fixed damage and poke people. If you're going to run like a faction-oriented box with Ultimular, you're going to want Burnheart built up. You're gonna want that faction buff there. We got two month we got three months before he's released, so that's perfect amount of time. If you have a three star Bernhardt, I would start building him up now if you want to use SP Ultimular. If you don't already have Bernhardt built up. Now other people I'm gonna look at this real quick. Other people for the faction buff are Leon. He is not as good for Ultimular because Leon's faction buff requires that you move in order to get the damage buff. Ultimular is going to end a turn and then act again, so he's not going to be able to use that. Now, if you're using a rush box with Ultimular and Leon, it's great just to get the act again on there. That way you can just keep punching after you reel people in. But again, primarily you want Bernhardt. Rosential is actually really good. Her faction buff is just like Bernhardt's, but it only gives 12% with you know, increases damage dealt by 12% for Empire units. So, you know, Bernhardt gets banned out or you don't want to run him. Have Rosencio take Empire's Honor. Bam. Just gave him plus 12% damage. Pretty good. 6% is not too much to cry about losing. You cannot use Lance with him because Lance only gives... The stat increase doesn't give any special buff. So, sorry Lance, you're the black sheep of the Empire. In Dark Reincarnation, Bozel, if you're running like a mixed box, Bozel is actually really good because if the enemy unit has three or more debuffs, damage dealt is increased by 15%. So Bozel can faction buff. He can go in, black hole everybody. Obviously, you're going to ban Resential out first. That way, they don't have that. And then you can reel people in with Mad Dragon's Flurry and then start attacking. You get that plus 15% extra damage. Licorice is great as well. Oh, let's see what her percent is. I can't remember. There it is. Go here. All right. For every one turn of cooldown time, damage is increased by 3% up to 20%. His Supreme Battle has 6 turns, so that's 18%. That's just as great as Bernhardt's. Fantastic. So again, running Mixed Box, Licorice, and Bozel are great for Ultimuler. It doesn't seem like it at first, but Bozel sets up Ultimuler. You know, first turn, faction buff, go in. Even if they kill Bozel, Ultimuler just comes in, rips everybody out, starts killing. For, for Strategic Masters, ult again, Ultimuler himself. But you can't have the HP recovery, so that can inhibit him from constantly attacking and killing everybody because he will be weakened. But then there's Lanford. Now, Lanford's won't work for him because Lanford, we're going to jump to him. 
I love Lanford, but it's just not going to work. If the caster is a mixed unit, the hero and soldier are of a different type or class, damage dealt is increased by 15%. Ultimuler is only going to be running flying units for this, because they're the only ones who have 5 movement to keep him moving. Now, if you're facing off against a Sage of the Tree, or like an, somebody who can constantly just keep pushing you back in the future like Himiko, and you don't want to deal with that, and you don't want to deal with Sage of the Trees blocking you off from moving, you can use a Ground Soldier. But it's not recommended. You're most likely just going to be using one of the Flying Units. So, if you're building a box with him, Rosencio is going to be in every single box, so she's always going to be there. She's always going to be an option, but she's also a high ban priority for people who have lots of debuffs. So I do recommend if you're going to play him, you have... If you're going to play a straight Empire box, you have to have Bernhardt, Leon, and Rosencio. That way you have three people to buff him. If you're running like a mixed box or like a... If you're running a hybrid box with AoE and single target... Bozal and Licorice are two very powerful units, which can also help him. They can weaken people to make it easier for him to kill people. If you're going to run Lanford, you need to have a very specific box in mind. Like, Lanford is great. He can buff up, like, Illustrial. He can buff up Leon, Wyler, Ashram, and Rainforce. And Rainforce is going to be uh, very happy with how Altamuller works. We'll get to that later. But you could run him, and Lanford can kill Hilda. If Hilda stays in Lancer form, because you have, like, a Leon here. Because they want to full counter Leon and make sure that he can't bust through anything. That He's great if you run pure infantry on him to bust through Hilda. You got a Lucia as a tank. So you could run a Strategic Master box and with both of these two to keep the buffs up. So it isn't that bad, but Lanford just doesn't have a solidified place because he's he's meant to just bust through or kill somebody and have high crit chance, but he's infantry and there's a lot of cavalry out there and he has low movement, so make sure you have apex boots. Alright. So, next... We got that out of the way. We're going to go to his class mastery. Again, it's the same class as Dragon Master. I put these on here a very long time ago. Haven't used him in whew, probably over a year. But you want on here, you don't want the magic defense. You want attack, defense, and HP. For armor and headwear. For weapon and accessory, you want attack, HP, and skill. Don't Don't mind the defense on there. That way you can just maximize his damage, give him some survivability, and give him a little bit more crit chance. The Arena Stones, you want attack. You don't want those. You want attack, you want the two crit increases here to give him more chance to crit and deal crit damage. Skill and HP. Again, give him some survivability with HP. So, super simple there. Next, we're going to move on to the soldiers. So, oh, we're going to go right here for a second. In his SP class, he gets Steel Wing Warrior. All, when attacking, attack plus 30%. When attacked by a ranged attack, defense and magic defense plus 30%. Oh, he hasn't added SP ultimate here. Anyways, but he gets him. This is going to be your primary unit that you want to use because anytime he attacks, he gets the attack buff. That's what you need. It doesn't have an HP requirement like the other units. Uh, or You are not going to use Dragon Trooper because this unit requires you to move before attacking, which you're not going to be doing. Not for the most part. So ignore her. If you don't have her built up, don't build, don't build her. I don't feel that she is a great unit. Like... Maybe in the future, Cherie might use her when we get an SP form, depending on what class it is, but I just feel Dragon Trooper is very lackluster. Gargoyle, when HP is above 50%, attack plus 30%, and when it's below 50%, defense is increased by 30%. So, that can give you some survivability after you're done attacking people. 
someone tries to come up to finish you off, that might be the difference between living and dying. They are very strong, just like Steel Wing Warriors. They have the exact same stats. They only have the HP requirement for attack. But conversely, if somebody attacks them, when these are above 50%, they can deal some more damage, and that could also kill off their soldiers and let you live. <laughs> Next is Vampire Bat. After attacking, soldiers restore HP, 45% of damage dealt at max rank. This can help you keep going. This I'm going to put this on. So cute. Anyways, this can help you live. This can help you just constantly keep fighting. But if you're facing off against really bulky people, because they don't get that attack buff, you might not end up finishing them off. So it all depends on what you're using. If you're using a lot of slower tank push, this might be a good choice. That way you can just keep the health up, but you're going to have healers anyway. I would say only use these if you don't have anybody else built up when you want to use them. Then we have Griffin Knight. When Soldier HP is above 80%, attack and defense increased by 30%. They have a little bit lower base defense and significantly lower HP. Oof. 45 less. But they can get a little bulkier. I don't recommend using them because... They have required the 80% HP. If I would build Steel Wing Warrior and use them, or Gargoyle if you have Gargoyle built up and don't want to waste resources on Steel Wing. Now, Ultimuler does have two, three, uh, three movement units. Hoplite can be decent because it does get increased attack and defense. Uh, let's see. Soldiers... Oh, we can't click it yet. <laughs> okay, not that one. Huh, that's weird. Why don't you love me? Anyways. At max rank, they get... I believe it is 20% attack and defense increase. I'm mean, actively attacking soldier damage dealt. Increases by 70%, and the entire unit ignores class disadvantage. That won't matter for Ultimuler, but you're probably not going to use him because the only reason you would use the Lancer is to counter cavalry, but he makes it so you don't. So I wouldn't use Hoplite on him. The only other option would be Cyclops. If you're attacking enemies with lower HP percentage than this unit, his attack and defense, let's see, max rank... Increase by 30%. So, situational, but you'll have items like Ragnarok and Twilight Star, which can reduce the enemy's HP, and you're also going to Mad Dragon's Flurry, which will deal them damage. So, you can actually do that. If you want to avoid Sage of the Trees and play a little bit slower, he's actually very, very good, because he can also get through, for example, Hilda. That class advantage, like if they run... The Magic Reflect Golems, the Crystal Molders. And they, since they don't have physical damage reduction, he can burst through them. Even if she has Phalanx, he'll have that class advantage to just blast right through them. Now, it's very, very situational when you would use this. Like, you just want to counter SP Ultimuler because having an in a infantry movement unit or walker, I guess we'll just call him walker from now on, will bypass that that you know carpet that he lays down to prevent you from moving there you just have to make sure you don't use Ultimuler's faction buff because it makes everything be treated as planes which would inhibit him even further so got to be careful on there when you're facing off against sage of the trees make sure you have a different faction buff but primarily i would use steel wing warrior or gargoyle whoever you have built up steel wing warrior because he doesn't have an hp requirement Then we're going to jump into the equipment. This is just what I've thrown on him so far. For his weapons, you primarily want Ragnarok, as you see here. Attack plus 10% before attacking. 100% chance to deal fixed damage once to the enemy. Damage is one times zero attack at max build at level 50. This is core. This will break last rights on anybody. If like if they have a juggler and he'll, you 
AoE, bring everybody in, and he heals them. This will break the last rites if they have it. That way you can make sure that they don't have that damage reduction. You can kill them. Very helpful. Very good. Super core. Now, Scarlet Reaper is actually super good as well. Because you Mad Dragon's Flurry, you AoE. They're going to be less than 100%. Hopefully they don't have a juggler. Damage dealt is increased by 5%. So, hey, more damage. And after dealing damage, deals fixed damage equal to half the hero's attack. So this can be used to finish somebody off. So, like, if you reel in three people, one of them is SP Elwin. You, now depending on, you can bring him in, depending on how bulky he is, you probably could just kill him anyways with a supreme battle, but depending on how it works out and where the positioning is, this could finish him off anyways. Probably if you're bringing everybody in though, you wouldn't need to, because you could just kill him off with one thing, but this can finish off anybody else who just revives at one. Like if you kill a Yulia and she deals next to no damage, this will kill her off at one HP. This will kill off a lot of people who revive at one HP. And it can be the difference between not killing them and killing them. Like, if they live at, you know, 100 HP, bam. Poke, and they're dead. If you don't have Ragnarok or Scarlet Reaper, Peacemaker is always a great option as well. It's very, very sturdy. 50% chance to nullify enemy passive skills. So, if, they, if it's like a Landius and he has Indomitable, negate it. You might be able to one-shot him. Probably not because he has Royal Cavalry, but you never know. Those crits help. You don't want to use Blue Star because, again, you have to move to get the increased damage. You don't want to use Yggdrasil Branch or Cursed Lance because they don't give attack increase. So, primarily Ragnarok because this is good in every situation deal damage before battle starts. Scarlet Reaper is a great second for dealing damage afterwards and getting 5% increased damage when they're not at full health. For his armor, you want last rites. I am probably in my box, if I use SP Ultimuler, depending on how I build it, I might rip this off of Ares, or I might rip this off of Freya, because I might not use Freya anymore. I might just re-enchant this. Like, Freya played a very big role until I got Hilda. But you want last rites. It's just great. Reduces damage taken by 40% at 100 HP. Everybody knows it, loves it, wants it, needs it. If you don't have that, Assault Suit is a very good second choice. Gives 5% HP, and when attacking, your defense and magic defense increase by 10%. So that's super strong. That's decent. That can help keep you alive as well. I wouldn't get Demon Lizard Skin, because this is only when you're attacked that deals a random debuff. Gargoyle Jacket can be good because it increases your defense by 15% at max rank, so that can help keep you alive. Monkey Vest, not great because it's only when attacked, not when you're attacking. Other than that, get a Last Rites. Pray to the Gotcha Gods that you get one. For his helmets, you are going to primarily want Regular Crown, his unique equipment at max rank defense and magic defense plus five percent buffs you've cast on yourself last for one more turn so this this is done intentionally with fearless dragon giving it only for three turns because of how good it is that way you can use this to give you a fourth turn so you're going to want this if you're playing a slower if you're, if you're playing a slower match you want this that way you can just keep those buffs up keep moving forward and keep having at least four buff at least three to four buffs up Maximize the attack and damage reduction. If you don't, if you're playing more rush, you might want to use Flower Boon Bonnet because if you're ending your turn at below 50% HP, it heals you for 20%. So that can heal your soldiers up. That can that'll heal you up, get you to where you need to be. It's a very random tech, but like again, you're playing rush. You're not worried about the long game. You're trying to end this ASAP. Bam, bam, bam. Three turns. Maybe four. So I do feel this is a hidden tech on there. That way, if he starts using his abilities, because he'll end his turn a few times. So this can just keep him regenerating. 
You then have Peerless Dragon. And his... Well... Haha. Uh -huh. Back. We then have... Heavenly Dragon Wing. That way every sword's HP equal to the stacks of Peerless that you have. So... That will be good just to keep him at full health. Other great equipment. Drumming Ender Eye. After taking action, 50% chance to decrease damage dealt by 15% from one enemy. That way they can't counter damage you a lot. You can just stay healthy and keep pressing onward. King's Crown is always good to help other units. It doesn't give you anything especially. But using it on other units is very great as well. If you don't have that, Assault Headgear gives you Defense and Magic Defense increased by 10% when attacking as well. I would not use Doomsday Herald because it only gives you Magic Defense and at Max Rank has a 50% chance to render one enemy unit without being able to be healed for a turn. Not that great. Primarily, you want to stick with Regular Crown. It's going to be the best for him considering the slower meta right now. But if you're playing Rush, I would use Flower Boon Bonnet in order to had the chance of recovering HP. Alright. For his accessory, we're going to hop into Wikigrisser. I do not have a Twilight Star, but this is recommended. Attack and Int plus 5%. Give 75 attack, 75 Int. You're only going to be using the attack. Before attacking, deals 6 damage equal to 1 times of the unit's lower stat of either attack or Int. If the enemy is using mixed troops... It cannot be immunized against. So this is great. Ragnarok. If you have a Ragnarok and Twilight Star, this will be fantastic. Bam, bam, bam. Lower them before battle. Kill off a couple soldiers. That way you can bust through. And you don't have to worry about the soldiers soaking up most of the damage. So this could potentially kill off like a Phalanx or two, depending on your stats. So that could be the difference between breaking through a tank or breaking through an Elwin if he's at full health. Especially if he triggers Blood Shield. Next, we're going to go down. <laughs> Got the Christmas stock in here. Uh, wing Shin Guards are decent if you don't have that. They get, when attacked, you get defense 10%. That, that way you can survive. They give 75 attack and plus 8% attack. Now, primarily, in my personal opinion, with the amount of holy units that are running around you're gonna want judge talisman reason being 75 attack 43 defense and attack eight percent when battling against holy units attack plus 12 percent that can make the difference really really can especially you know you're going up against the leaden you want to put him down you're going up against a yulia this can give you enough to just kill her and make it so she deals almost no damage if you want more health Slayer's Emblem is great. When battling against fire units, gain attack plus 12%. It's the same thing as there, except it gives HP instead of defense. Very solid. Overlord Badge is good if you don't have any of these, but somehow manages to get this. Immune to defense, magic defense, attack, and int reduction, and mobility down reduction. All stats get plus 5%. HP 500 plus and 75 attack. Super solid, super great. Can make sure he doesn't get any stats down so you can make sure he's able to kill everybody. I wouldn't use Thor's necklace or Elven Ring. Like you only get Elven Ring's proc when attacking, but attack and defense plus 8% could give him a little bit of survivability if that's the only thing you have. A 50% chance to deal fixed damage is not worth it. Heart of Gaia. All stats plus 5% and immune to heal reversal and curse of wounding. You could make an argument for this because somebody might do something like an Estelle might try to you know might try to poke him and make it so that he deals damage to himself. So you could do that. Similar to Overlord Badge, but you don't get the protection from the reduction effects. But it's a different kind, so that might be good. It does give you 75 attack, so it is solid if you're I don't foresee this being a lot useful because many Listels are not being used 
because of Resent Seal. Prisoner's Gear is actually pretty decent. Getting released again in May. When battling against Cavalry, attack plus 12%. Standard 8% attack. It's just like Slayer's Emblem. Except for Cavalry. So, it's actually really good. If Hilda changes to Cavalry, or you're running against a Cavalry Hilda, that, this can help you just kill or one-shot her. Don't need any tank accessories here. Ignore those. But, again, you if you can, get a Twilight Star. Deal as much damage as possible. For enchantments, you are going to primarily want Breeze, as it gives, plus 2 mobility potentially, and damage dealt, increased by 10%. Very good. Everybody knows it. Everybody loves it. This is great if you're running running a box that does not have a lot of mobility buffers so he can get into better position. But alternatively, and I might experiment with this, swap gears around. Rough C is actually very good for him. When attacking, attack increases by 10% and damage taken is reduced by 15%. Stacking this with your abilities already, you'll be taking next to nothing. So if you... Run Rough C, and you don't have anybody else to faction buff. You could use your own faction buff, not have to worry so much about taking damage and needing to recover, because you'll just have, like, 50% damage reduction at all time. Fan it is fantastic with him. And you, you can also make the argument with a slower tank push, you would want this as well, because you're in, in your guard, and you can be held up by the healer next turn. So just attack, kill, attack, kill damage somebody significantly, live at one, get healed. I'm going to try Breeze out, but I might switch him with it with my Claret's gear, which is Rough C, and try it out there as well, because the extra attack can mean the difference between busting a tank open or not. All right. Next, we're going to get into units that you want to stay away from when you're playing in Apex. Units that you want to ban. Magic users in general, like Light of Genesis, Noemi, Rachel, you want to get rid of people like these. He's going to be very weak to magic. He is not going to live through that. He's going to be a physically tanky DPS. So make sure you get rid of these people, especially Light of Genesis is super popular right now. I feel like with more Legion of Glory boxes, Noemi is going to be run because she also has high range. So make sure to get these three out of the way. You kind of don't want to go up against the Freya because she can do a lot of fixed damage before battle. She, she can be pretty tanky as well. If she is not running a Blood Pact and has a Swordsmith medal, she can stop your... Your, your Ragnarok from going off. If she has mixed troops and doesn't have Martyr equipped, then your Twilight Star will break it. But a lot of times they're going to be running... Or not, I shouldn't say Martyr. I should say Redeemer. So a lot of times they will be running Redeemer. But I don't like playing against her. Just really annoying. But you don't see too much of her now that Hilda's out. You want to get rid of Sage of the Trees. Because since you're going to be running... Where is he? Five mobility all the time with the fire units. You don't want to be impeded by Wave Whisper. Get rid of him because he can stop you from pushing forward and he can just keep pushing you back and make you useless. Licorice is pretty annoying because you're going to be ending your turn in it. And her 3C Dark Despair, when it paints, when it paints the ground, it's going to deal you damage at the end of turn. If you don't have that peerless dragon, or I shouldn't say that. Hold on. If you don't have Heavenly Dragon Wing to keep you recovering because you're having him give himself his own faction buff, that can wear you down and that can make it so you lose some soldiers, don't deal enough damage. So you want to stay away from Licorice. You do want to stay away from Yulia. She is just not a fun time for him. The fact that... She has three lives, she deals magic damage, she's probably going to recover a bunch of HP and not let him trigger Supreme Battle. Stay away from her. Units that revive in general, you want to stay away from, like Landius and Hilda if possible. 
We're most likely not going to be able to stay away from Hilda, so try not to fight her too much. There's so many tanks that have revives now, because everybody can just put redeemers on them. So try not to attack any tanks in general. Ban out anybody who uses redeemers if possible. That way you don't have to deal with it. Illustrial and archers in general, you want to stay away from. She, with Jade Storm, will one-shot him all the time. Even through last rites, even at full health. Just Jade Storm converts those buffs. There's going to be something that makes him take more damage, or he has reduced defense, something like that. Ban her out, stay away from her. Don't, don't let any archers through. You don't ever want to deal with that. You do want to stay away from units that give heal reversal or just block or block healing specifically and through range. So if they have like an Egbert, you don't want him to get through and acid burn you so you can't recover. You don't want to deal with Lestelle because you're not going to be running that heart of Gaia most likely. So make sure to watch out for them. Make sure to watch out for Reen. He's He should be removed from the game, but that's a different subject. So... Basically ban anybody who can revive, especially Yulia who can revive multiple times. Get rid of Sage of the Trees and Yulia. If you get rid of people like that, you're going to have a fun time with Ultimuler. Units that work fantastic with Ultimuler, anybody who gives them a faction buff as well. We've already been over there. Leon, Bernhardt, Rosencio, uh, Lanford, Bozel, and Licorice. They're all going to help him, help him deal the maximum damage possible. Ares is actually super, super amazing with him because let's just say you go in, you kill one unit, and then you severely damage another unit because you just couldn't kill them. They were too tanky. You lost too many soldiers because you had the faction buff yourself. Ares can come in, Fearless Hurricane, Wind Whisper, everybody's standing next to each other, even if they kill Ultimealer. He's bound to finish off most people or leave them at unrecoverable health. Fantastic combo because... They can't get everybody away. They just can't. You can even just go in with Noble Charge, bust somebody through. I would do Wind Whisper in there because you pull everybody together and then Ares can pull everybody again. So, hey, tons of AoE. If you're running a more... a Mimi Empire box, you can use Leonhart. Where is he? glorious with fusion dark emperor sword and zero storm or even fire machete you can have two aoe's like you can instant transfer that turn before you can have up to three aoe's in total have a balance plane on him you can hit almost the entire screen he can come up finish everybody off you'll be super happy with there just like how Ares does AoE users in general are going to love him. Like That's why you're using Licorice and Bozel, because he can pull everybody in as well. If they can't reach, they kill Ultimular off. Bo Excuse me. Bozel and Licorice come in to finish off, put him at unrecoverable health. They're going to love him. Rainforce. Oof. Where is he? Where is that beautiful... That beautiful man. Rainforce will love it, because if you pull, like... The entire enemy team there with his 3C. Lunar Flare. You hit three or more people. The skills cooldown is cleared and it adds an additional stack of burn. So they get two stacks. So, you know, you set up. You poke people two times. You, With him and his Sonic Blade. Altimuler rips all five people next to each other. They can't all get away. Just not possible. He comes in. Badunk. Attacks three people, attacks, hits three people at least. You, If you hit all five and you trigger your effect, you do it again, and bam, there it's unrecoverable. One, two, follow up. So, and also because he's a strategic master, Altimuler can buff him, and so can Lanford. Otherwise... 
he ultimately is great on his own because he sets himself up to be great on his own. Just being able to kill everybody and rip everybody out of position. Florentia and Liana can give him Act Again in order to refresh cooldowns. If it's a slower tank push and you can stay in your guard's range while pulling everybody into you, that can make it even harder for the enemy to recover because you can just keep punching people. Alright. That is going to wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. I really f It is a few months out before him, so... We're going to be able to see some videos and fights uh, with him on the Chinese server. I really feel like he's going to shake things up. You're going to see Empire and Strategic Masters come back. Especially because you can run Illustrial, you can run Leon and the new Bernhardt, who will be out by that point. So, it's going to be interesting. We're going to be getting all... The game is getting a lot better in the meta, in my opinion, with... AoE just not being as dominant as it used to be with Rosenseal and other people out now to counter it. And single target getting better. <laughs> it's getting more fun. You're going to be able to have boxes that you like to play more instead of just playing to win the meta. Alright. Again, I do want to thank y'all for watching. Righteous Freed, out.